This is the book of Psalms, chapter 47. And the point is verse 2, and it reads, For the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, most high, is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Call Loyam, La Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem. I want to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach the do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwath, as well as the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. This is the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant. And I'm coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Shem Shai. This lesson is in regards to this article I seen a couple of days ago. Um, and it reads, it <clears throat> says, Florida woman was shoplifting with her car when her car with two children inside burst into flames. Police. And if I'm not mistaken, this woman is a Jake. Uh, I guess that's an image of the... The uh, car on fire, more left her two children inside the car that burst into flames. Yep, there she go. Alicia Moore, 24, Orlando resident, is charged with aggravated child neglect and arson. So I don't know if she basically set the car on fire or what. But, you know, I was just thinking about judgment when I heard it. I remember brother posted it. And, you know, we living in a time of judgment. You know, uh, you know scriptures talk about... Uh, Judgment shall begin in the house of the Most High, meaning it's going to begin with those that know that they Israelites. You know, um, you know, you got the whole time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter thirty, verse seven. We, what do you mean? That's judgment. You know, it's judgment on, on to the two thirds. In the book of um, First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen. For the time has come that judgment, but for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High, and if it first begin at us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? So if the Lord is going to judge those that know that they're Israel, how much more so a two-third? <clears throat> I'm going to bring a little bit of this article out. Well, will is edifying. It reads, Florida woman was shoplifting when her car with two children inside burst into flames. It says a Florida mother, this is out of the New York Post. Salaki, a, a Florida mother was busy shoplifting inside of a department store when her car suddenly busted into flames with her two children trapped inside, according to police. So they making it seem like because they charging her with arson as well. How can they uh, charge her with arson <laughs> if it, you know, I guess they say it because she didn't have her car um, like basically running properly. I don't know. If the ladies up here is shoplifting more than likely, she had just shoplifted. You know, you got you know, it's funny too. You know how hypocritical Esau is because brother just posted that up. You know, they passed laws in California where um, you know, employees can't even do nothing to shoplifters. You know what I'm saying? Then you got this happening in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, this upside down ass place. It says a Florida mother was busy shoplifting inside of a department store when her car suddenly burst into flames with her two children trapped inside, according to police. Alicia Moore, 24, parked her car outside the Dillard's department store. I didn't even know Dillard's was still open. At the uh, Ov uh, Oviedo Mall on March 26th with her two children, so like it, with her two young kids inside who could not care for themselves, according to a police report. So basically, they must have been really young. That's why I'm saying young kids. The Orlando native then went inside the store with a man who has not been identified and allegedly began stealing from the store, according to police. Nearly an hour later, she left the store and found her car engulfed in a massive blaze. The mother dropped all of the alleged... Right, so she obviously gave a fuck about her kids, you know. But that's just judgment, you know. Again, uh, it, scriptures talk about uh, a wicked, wicked men understanding of not judgment, you know. Uh... You know, the scriptures talk about thou shalt not steal. And although Jake, you know, that's in his truth, we understand that Esau, Edom is the devil. Scripture says, do not steal. You know what I mean? Now, the thing is, the scriptures also say that um, basically if a man steal because he is hungry, he shall not be despised. But if he get caught stealing, he should pay back, I think, sevenfold or something like that. If I'm, I'm roughly paraphrasing, but basically, you know, this devil will literally 
like um a brother constantly brings it out. I think it was in California. It was a Jake that um was a felon. And you know, Jake, um, well, you know, in California they got that three time um felon law where if you get three felonies, you can get like twenty five years to life. Which is all, like I said, a money scheme set up and perpetuated by this fucking devil. Because you know what I mean? Well, anyway, long story short, the Jake, he basically broke into a church and was stealing from the church. So, he, you know, the crime didn't involve him robbing anybody, hurting anybody. He broke into a church. It was basically like a, um, what's the word? I ain't going to say a victimless crime. Yeah, pretty much a victimless crime because nobody was hurt to do it. You got to think about it. If the church, if he's eating the food of the church... The church gets donations. Churches have food drives and shit. Like I said, like I've had to, you know, eat at soup kitchens and shit like that. Like, you know, it's funny because I worked at restaurants when I first began working. And I worked at like some, I don't say high-end restaurants, but, you know, restaurants like Applebee's and shit like that. And, um, you know, they had policies where you, you couldn't take that food. You had to discard that food. But then when I became homeless, I would see... This particular church, they would get donations from all these restaurants. So it's funny, like, now the whole purpose that the restaurants don't want you to take the food is because if somebody eats the food and gets sicked off of it, it could be a lawsuit. But it was, I just always found it funny, like, I, because what I used to do when I worked at these restaurants, I would take the food and give it to Jake. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up in the inner city. You know, you would see Jake out there fucked up on drugs or whatever. You know what I mean? Jake more concerned about chasing again. Because that's how fucked up Jake life be. You know, the, I was just watching the video, the breakdown of um, 2 Ezra chapter 14. And the elders was going into um, how you had one of those Rothschilds that OD. And he was talking about how, you know, basically uh, it's, it's scripture that talks about how um, the rich basically are um, miserable or something, roughly paraphrased. I would have to, I, I, I know I wrote it down, but I, I can't think of the scripture off the top of my head. I think it's, I want to say it's Psalms 19 and 11, though. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I might be butchering it, but or mixing up scriptures. But nonetheless, he he went into how Jake, of course, is destitute because look at Jake's situation. We up under the curses, but you know Esau, Edom, they pretty much got everything. And when you go into the Rothschilds, you know what I mean? Like they be beyond wealthy. You know what I mean? Like so, you know, it, it, I just find it funny that you know. The elder was just speaking on this recently, but, you know, again, now when these different, and then they probably allowed them to now do it where they can write the shit off. Because like I said, again, uh, you know, you suppose it was told to discard that food, but not like I said, again, now, you know, the city of Cleveland, because I reside out of Cleveland, you know, like basically they don't want you to give a homeless person money. They want you to, like put it in um you know they got organizations here that's supposed to like the homeless coalition and whatnot but i've seen this firsthand that a lot of that shit corrupt you know salakia for the digression but you know spirit is like the wind so you know and at the end of the day you know like i was watching a video i forgot who did it was one of the brothers about in california i've had an opportunity to visit the akiyam in california called loyam la yabba shayam shah but you know, when you see that, that's how you know America's over with. Because everybody's breaking their neck to get to California. Well, what I got down at downtown Los Angeles, it smelled like shit. Not being funny or nothing. And, and when you go into that, that's spiritual. You know, spirits come with smells and all that. You know, you seeing people out there literally getting high. You know, and I see certain shit in my city. I ain't going to go into too much detail. But I was like, wow, the world is truly a ghetto. So just imagine, you know. You know, I remember the, the hotel that I, um, motel that I rented because I stayed out there for a week. And I remember the brother that was basically driving me around. He didn't want to leave me. He like, I can't leave you like this. And I'm like, you know, just showing you how funny it is. Like you think of Long Beach, Long Beach, because you hear about Snoop staying out that way. And when I got out there, it seemed like it was nothing but Northern Kingdom. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, you seen, you know, look like Judah sprinkled in. Here and there, but for the most part, it all looked like Latin tribe. So, but saying all that to say this, uh, you know, uh, Jake, you know, do a lot of stuff out of desperation, you know. So I can see her stealing because, you know, especially now, again, like I said, people, a lot of people are committing crimes to, to survive. You know, life is a lot harder because of inflation and the price of food and, you know, 
Because although, you know, things cost them more to obtain, you know, the price of living is going up, but your paycheck ain't. It says the Orlando native then went inside the store with a man who I read that part. I read that part. It says after the explosion, nearby shoppers and witnesses jumped into action and helped rescue the children inside. One child suffered first degree burns to the face and ears, according to the police report. Video shared by the city of a video caught on a Tesla dash cam in the parking lot shows the black windows. So like it, the back windows and front windshield of the white car shatter as massive. Flames and smoke violently spewed from the inside. Well, shit, look at the picture. And then they talk about first degree burn. So, you know, and again, wicked men understand of not judgment. So that child was judged that way for whatever particular reason. But right now, these spirits is getting busy on these people. Like you had the Jake family where you had the mother and the daughter that basically um, dismembered the grandmother and then grilled her on the grill. And then now you would think that, the, you know, that's shit that you would hear about Esau doing. But you got Jake doing crazy shit now. So that's how you know these spirits is active. And the scriptures say you got spirits created for vengeance. These deaf angels is jumping on, on, on everybody. Well, not everybody. But jumping on to those that basically it was ordained for them to jump on <laughs> to do a lot of different acts of violence right nowadays. Salakia, I'm... Kind of rambling. I um, got tired out of no, nowhere. But through the spirit, you know, because I wanted to, to, to try to do this video in the morning. But, you know, through the spirit and power of y'all, we have to push ourselves because we're going to come into times, you know, <laughs> you, go, that, well, you, go, you, you ain't going to see no hope. You ain't going to see no, no, um, no, no end in sight. And that's where your hope and faith will have to come. So. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shem, we'll keep pushing with the video. It says, after the explosion, nearby shoppers, I read that part. I read that part. It says, the vehicle was totally, so lucky, the vehicle was totaled in the fire. Cops said the cause of the fire was not immediately clear. Moore was arrested on May 31st and charged with aggravated child neglect and arson, as well as petty theft and battery charges. So, they charging her with arson because her car caught on fire. Can't make this shit up. She is being held in Seminole County Jail on a $48,000 bond. And I guess the guy got away. And so point of the lesson is, uh, you know, it caught my attention because that's judgment. Not only did she get arrested, she had to watch her children get fucked up. And, you know, again, she obviously gave a fuck about the children. That's why, you know what I mean? She didn't run like the dude did. They didn't say that the male that she was with got, got arrested. You know what I mean? Said only she did. So, again, it made me think about certain scriptures, because scriptures talk about judgment. It's the book, uh, uh, and they, people will say that's wicked and evil, but people don't understand Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, who you people eagerly call God and Jesus Christ. Yahweh meaning he is or he exists. Bashim meaning in the name. Yahweh Shah meaning he saves or he delivers, or he is the deliverer. The true names of the Most High God and the Son, who you people eagerly call God and Jesus Christ. You know, scriptures, you know, and that's why a lot of people going to be caught off guard. That's why the scriptures talk about it coming as a thief in the night, the judgment, you know, because people have this um, falsehood of who the most high God is. The most, most people don't really understand who the most high God is. When you take time to think about it, let's just think about this much. The most high God was so displeased with the world that he flooded the entire earth. <laughs> then you talk about, you, now we live in day and age where God loves everybody and everybody's accepted you know the weirder the it seems like the more you offensive to the most high the more you're supposed to be loved based on this notion of esau edom not understanding that this devil is so conniving and, 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 and what's the word um manipulative because he's the set of perdition He's is the antichrist he's against the most high and he knows that he has a judgment so his whole Objective is to get so many people to go off because so he don't suffer alone. That's my opinion, especially you Jakes that's been given the, the birthright. Why do you think this agenda is going to be pushed mainly towards you? You know, these devils and these heathens are coming up with a whole, you know, way of life that excludes you. You know, we were considered the laborers of this of this world. Well, now they come into a time where they go use robots. <laughs> they go use robots and shit. 
So what need do they need for Jake? You know what I mean? They don't need Jake. You know, you, you got to wonder about uh, how the elders always talked about how they use entertainment to distract the minds of the individuals. And when you, you know, in that, in that, in that second Ezra's breakdown, they was going into that too. You know, how this is the revised Roman Empire. You know, in this, in this kingdom, you had to learn Latin. You know, they practice a lot of laws in Latin. There's a lot of Roman architecture. It's a number of, um, what's the word? Not coincidences, but uh, similarities to ancient Rome and today. I got a book called Are We Rome? You know, <laughs> and it basically compares ancient Rome to modern day America. And you'd be surprised how many similarities. That's why this place is considered Egypt, Sodom and Egypt as well. When you go into, you know, like the elder Yashawamba from Dallas often goes, in, well, not often, but he has gone into a, number, a few different times, you know, the comparisons between ancient Egypt and America. The colors of ancient Egypt was red, white, and blue. <laughs> you know? You know, you had women's liberation and women's rights in ancient Egypt. You had a fucking woman try to be the, you know, you had women pharaohs. If that ain't bugged out, men have a certain kind of energy, a masculine energy. Women have a certain kind of energy. It's supposed to be a feminine energy. That's what makes it beautiful for a man to be a man in his strength and a woman to be a woman in the strength and a real man wants a real woman and vice versa. But only in weirdo ass places like ancient Egypt, you know, it's just, uh, Salakia, it's just a number of comparisons like beer, like bowling. All these things was actually... That's how you know it's no new thing under the sun. You know, people think that things are so advanced nowadays, but it's nothing new. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the the signals that they use to do the internet, things those are all men didn't discover anything. I, I mean, he he didn't create anything. So lock it. Man didn't create anything. He discovered. He discovered because you got to understand elements always existed. You know. And, and, and whether you think Yahweh Shah, who you people are ignorantly called Jesus Christ, was doing, he was manipulating elements. Tells you that uh, the most high, you know, most high God, Yahweh created Yahweh Shah, and Yahweh Shah created everything. So that's the reason why he was able to basically, uh, like, uh, what's the word? Uh, exercise those spirits off of, you know, like Legion and the different uh Spirits that he exercised off of different individuals because he created the spirits <laughs> along with the Allah Hayyim. So that leads to this perfect scripture because this is the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, and it reads, I form the law. So lucky. I will start at verse 5. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5, and it reads, I am the Lord, Yahweh by Shibi Yahshai. There is none else. There is no power beside me. I gird thee. Though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. Scriptures tell you in the book of Psalms that the gods of the nations are idols. <laughs> you know, they're just images. I am the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua, and there is none else. I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And when you have any understanding, you know, it's no good without bad. It's no, you know, it, you know, when you go into power, like what, like what starts a car battery? When you go into electricity, you have a negative and a positive. You know, the scriptures talk about in the book of Proverbs chapter 11, that a false, false weight is a, a false balance is abomination. So lucky. A false balance is abomination. So they try to tell you that the most high God is all good. But you, it's no, people aren't all good. You know, they talk about uh, Mother Teresa and Gandhi. Then you come to find out, that they talk about Mother Teresa basically had a sex ring where they was trafficking little children. <laughs> you know, it, it, like so, and I wouldn't be surprised. This world is not what you think it is. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, I think Book of John chapter five talks about how all judgment is given to Yahweh Shah, you know, because the Most High God created Yahweh Shah, and then Yahweh Shah created the Allah Hayyim, and through Yahweh Shah, the Allah Hayyim created all everything that we have today. So all judgment was given to Yahweh Shah. That's why the scriptures talk about all shall sit in the, in the judgment or appear at the judgment seat of uh, Yahweh Shah. 
I think that's what 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the book of Psalms chapter 37. And verse 28. And it reads. For the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, shall love of judgment and forsake of not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The most high love of judgment, you know. I got another one. I think it's um, Zephaniah. Is it either Zephaniah or Zechariah? I think it's Zephaniah. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 5. The just Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He fell of not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. And again, you know, like I said, how the scriptures talk about a wicked man understanding of not judgment. They wouldn't understand why that little boy got burnt like that. Both of them children got burnt. But, you know, the Lord judgeth. As a nation and individually. You don't know who that person was in the past. You know. I remember it was talking about. You had a. Um, I think it was some down south somewhere. It was like back in the day. It was a school bus of little Jake children. That basically all had. Like the bus. Like went down a, a hill. And ran off into the, the lake. And basically the children drowned. And then like a couple years later. I mean not a couple years later. A couple years ago. In the same like city or state, the same situation happened. It was a bunch of Jake kids in a bus that ran into a lake and they all drowned. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lock here. This is the book of um, First Samuel. I'm probably going to end it with this. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6 and it reads, The Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So it's the Most High God, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, who you people England call Jesus Christ, or God in Jesus Christ. God is Abba Nawa, or the Father, Yahweh. Why? Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You know, he killeth and he maketh alive, you know. He wound and he heals, you know. He bring it down to the grave and he bring it up. So he can actually take your life or he can restore it upon you. That's why you have individuals, you know, I've seen brothers in the camp that was real sick. You know, they, you know brothers have testimonies. You know, that's the thing. And what do a two-third got? Belief in Esau, Edom. Scripture talk about woe to them that go to Egypt for help. You know. So, uh, again, I'm going to end the lesson there. Just remember, the Most High God, we in a time of judgment. You're going to see more and more judgment coming to pass. If you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, similar Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shire, you will be destroyed. With that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Loyam, by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rachakotas, work a thumb. So lucky. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of the great millstone who teach and do real well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom wow to the Akwath as well as the Akim after listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom wow to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad and the land of other nations appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Wow. So next time I'm able to come with another lesson, I'm going to say Shalom, wow, Shalom. Wow. Waffle of a ball. Shalom. Kwam Yashurala.